What if I told you that this is not a fixed connection? Well, you might say that the end of the beam is welded all around to the flange of the column, therefore it is a fixed connection. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. What about this reinforced concrete beam fully embedded into the column? Is it fixed or pinned? When I was at uni, great times by the way, my structural analysis lecturer would give me a beam or a portal frame to draw the bending moment and shear force diagram. Um, I would get something like this, a simply supported beam or a cantilever beam fixed at the end or a beam fixed or pinned to a column and I would happily draw the diagrams without giving much attention to how those supports and connections actually worked. However, in real life, you don't have your teacher telling you if the beam or column is fixed or pinned, and it is your job as an engineer to decide the most appropriate connection, design it, and detail it. In this video, I'm gonna try to simplify the way you look at these connections and show you how you can make sure a connection is rigid or flexible. In simple terms, a fixed connection is able to restrain rotation and transfer moment between the structural members. That's when you get that um, negative moment in the column. A pinned connection, on the other hand, will allow the structural member to rotate and therefore cannot transfer any moment. So the beam will take all the bending moment. Let's focus on the ability of these connections to transfer moment. If we use this I-beam example, we know that the top fibers above the neutral axis are in compression and the bottom fibers below the neutral axis are in tension. So if we draw the stress distribution over the cross section, we get something like this, with the maximum compressive stress at the top and maximum tensile stress at the bottom of the beam. This is not new for you, you learn this in mechanics of materials. My point here is the flanges are taking the bending moment. So if you're trying to transfer moment from the beam to the column, like a fixed connection does, Guess what? You need to connect the flanges to the column. It makes sense, right? The same principle applies to reinforced concrete beams, but now instead of a flange, you have the, um, you have the reinforcing bars. A pin connection, also known as shear connection, will require only the web of the beam to be connected to the column, or sometimes the bottom flange as well. And if you use the same train of thought, you know that the web takes most of the shear and that's why you only need to attach the web of the beam to the column. And remember, this has nothing to do with welding or bolting. There is a misconception among students and fresh engineers that if there is weld, it's a fixed connection and if there are bolts, it's a pinned connection. Um, you can weld a cleat plate to the web of the beam and it's still a paint connection. The bolts and weld do not define the type of connection. They, they're only elements of the connection as a whole. A welded paint connection can resist higher moments loads than bolted ones. Um, maybe, I think maybe that's where this misconception comes from, I would assume. I'm gonna walk you through um, a couple of examples of shear connections as well as moment connections. Let's start with shear connections. This is a clay plate welded to the flange of the column and bolted to the web of the beam. This one is a beam to beam connection. You can have an angle bolted to the flange of the column and bolted to the web of the beam. You can also have a welded angle seat with bolts to the beam. And for the moment connections, um, this is a welded connection between beam and column with stiffeners. This one is a bolted moment end plate. This is an apex connection used a lot in portal frames. This is a bolted splice connection when you need to extend a beam or a column. And reinforced concrete structures are typically designed to transfer moment as the structure is monolithic and there's negative and positive reinforcement as well. The next point I'll touch upon is the stiffness of the elements. Stiffer structural elements will attract more of the internal forces. 
a very stiff beam will take away the internal forces from a more flexible column. I'll show you in a practical example. Let's consider a 250i beam supported by two 250 columns and the columns are fully fixed to the beam. So here we are expecting some negative moment at the column under gravity loads. As you can see, we've got 111 kilonewtons meter positive bending moment and 89 kilonewtons meter negative. Therefore, the beam is transferring moment to the column as expected from a fixed connection. Now let's change the size of this beam to a much stiffer cross section, like a 610 UB. Now you can see that even though I haven't changed the connection and the column is still fully fixed to the beam, there's almost no transfer of moment. We went from 89 kilonewtons meter to 9 kilonewtons meter. And this happens because now you have a stiff beam supported by a relatively flexible column. In any structural system, the internal forces are distributed among the structural elements according to their relative stiffness. You can imagine a reinforced concrete beam supported by a column made of gummy bears. Even though it's a delicious column and the column is fully fixed to the beam, the gummy bears are too flexible and will not be able to take any moment and that's what happened to our 610 UB supported by a 250 UB. A 250 UB is like a gummy bear if compared to the 610 UB. It is important to keep these ideas in mind when designing a beam without taking into account the stiffness of the support. We often simplify our designs by replacing the column for support like this. And if we were to analyze this beam like that, we would get a bending moment. We would get a bending moment diagram completely different from this structure. Here we're getting 135 kilonewtons meter, while here it is only 9 kilonewtons meter. This support here is an idealized, perfectly rigid support, and there's no perfectly rigid support in real life. Now, going back to that first image that I showed you in the beginning of the video, it definitely looks like a configuration of a fixed connection. However, if the flange of the column is not stiff enough, it could deform and the beam could rotate, which would invalidate our assumptions of a fixed connection. Um, that's why we use stiffeners sometimes, and you gotta be mindful of these details. Um, this also applies to a base plate. You can have your four bolts column welded to the base plate, but if your base plate is not thick enough, it can deform and therefore it's not a fixed connection anymore. I'm going to stop for here now uh, because this video is getting too long, but if you have any questions or you would like to, to add some more information, just leave a comment below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.